Hey there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carson and I do food photography. In the last video, we did a step-by-step -step Lightroom edit on this orange juice picture. Um, and today we're gonna go through and take all those pictures that we edited and we're going to put them into Photoshop and create a stop motion video for you. These are super easy to create and I made a lot of them on commission for um, different companies that I've worked for in the past. Um, and they really, really perform well on like Instagram and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to show you the different formats that we can export them in and just the really easy setup that it takes to edit these in Photoshop and produce a video from Photoshop. So let's hop into it. Okay, so here we have just the main Photoshop homepage and there's going to be two ways you can upload these files. You can either go to create new and I have the Instagram portrait size saved right here. Um, you can find that really easily just by going on Google and finding the dimensions and inputting them on this side. So click on this or you can make a custom one where you just input your dimensions and go ahead and create. And that will pull up this blank document for you and this is going to be just the regular Instagram post size which is what I'm creating this stop motion for so that's why I'm going to use this size but this will work with any size that you have. So then I'm going to go to my pictures that I have and it's going to be all of these orange juice ones and I'm going to just drag them all into my image um, that I have here on Photoshop and then when it loads you just hit the check mark and I did the first one separately just because they were out of order see the first ones down here and then the top ones are all up here like two through whatever so now that I have the first one loaded, I can click the two all the way down to the 21 and then I can drag all of those in at the same time. And then just each one I'll have to hit the check, check mark for. Um, and you're going to want to watch just to make sure this is all lining up and that the only thing changing is the um, subject that you want changing because sometimes if you didn't crop it correctly, the background can kind of um, mess up a bit and it will look a bit wonky. So you just want to make sure that that's all lining up and it's um, something you can do later on for sure, but it's just easier to make sure that you're doing it while um, in this. Okay, so now we have all of these layers added in and you want all of these separate pictures to be separate layers because this is going to be important for what we're going to do next. So then you come to window up here and right here you might have to scroll down a bit for it but come to timeline and that will make this pop up right here. I like to zoom out just a bit. You can do that by holding uh, the command button and the minus button together and that will zoom out and you can hit the command plus button to zoom back in. Um, just a really quick way to do that so you don't have to use tools or anything. Okay so now you have your timeline created down here. You have all your layers over here. And we start with our base layer going all the way up to our 21st layers, how many we have in this one. So then you go to create frame animation, you click that, and straight away it will create just one frame from your base layer down here. So then you hit this little three lined button right here. That will open up this menu right here and you want to make frames from layers. And that's going to create a frame for each layer that you have. So you just click that. And then as you can see, we have all those layers right here now into frames. And it did make a frame for our background, which is that plain white. Um, so we will delete that. So you can see when it's selected, it's just highlighted lightly the box. So we're going to hit that, hit delete and delete that frame because we don't want that. So then along the bottom here, you can see zero seconds. And then if you hit the little arrow next to it, it shows you all of the seconds that um, you can have as options for your uh, play speed through your frames. You can hit other and make it uh, a custom time, but I find that these all work decently well. They're pretty good increments. Um, but instead of going through and selecting each one and changing each layer individually, we're gonna come back over to this, hit that, go to select all frames. So now all of these frames are selected and you can just go to the first one we're going to hit 0.2 for now, and that will change all of your frames at the same time. So then I'm going to click off of that so it 
doesn't select all of them, I'm going to select the first one, which it will show you over here on your frames, which um, frame is showing. So which layer is showing as well. So you can see with this eye right here, that's just showing the first layer. So now with our first frame selected, which is also our first layer, we're going to preview the stop motion to make sure we like the timing that we have on it and to make sure everything just runs smoothly through it. Um, and you can do this really easily by just hitting this play button down here. Sometimes it does take a little while to load and run smoothly through your animation. So you're going to just have to let it run for a little bit just to make sure you're getting that smooth look through your um, stop motion video. So we're going to hit play. And it's a bit choppy at first just because it hasn't really loaded very much. But then as you can see, everything's lining up and the only thing moving is the orange juice and that pour that's happening. And so there you have it. I'm going to test what it looks like having the animation run at 0.1 seconds. So I'm going to select all frames, change that to 0.1 seconds, and then we'll see what that looks like. Because I usually like a bit quicker of one, it just makes it look a bit more fun and it's just my preference for how it looks. Um, so you can see that's all running smoothly, everything's lining up, and the only thing moving is the orange juice. So I'm happy with that. So we're going to then go to um, either save first or just go straight to export. So you can export as right here. And you can do that um, to lead it to exporting as a GIF or exporting as some other format. So when you go to export as, it has the PNG option, the JPEG, GIF, and SVG. Um, I don't use any of these just because GIF isn't compatible with every single um, site and platform that you use. For instance, you can't post GIFs to Instagram, they have to be videos. Um, PNG and JPEG would not work for this. So we're going to go down here to cancel that because we don't want to export it like that. So then if you want it as a video, you can go to export and then down here you can go to render video and then just give it a name. We're going to call it orange juice stop and then the destination, make sure that's in the right place that you want it. And I don't really mess around with these down here just because I find that there's no need really because I have everything set already. So when you go to render. So then once you do that, it will just export your video. It might take a bit of time depending on the storage on your laptop or computer that you're using, but it will just export it to that destination and then you can upload it to whatever you want and it will just be like a three to five second video depending on the time that you put on your frames down here. Okay, and now I'll show you the second way to import your images and this is gonna be just a different way to import everything else that you do with the editing and whatnot and exporting and everything. Is going to be the exact same. This is just how to import if you don't have a set ratio that you're wanting to use. Like for instance, if I use the original ratios of this picture, it would extend a bit further down here and up here. And that would mean that I wanted all my pictures to match that. And so we would need a file that matched those dimensions of our original picture. So what we're going to do is come to these pictures that we had imported for our last one take the first one and go to open with, and we're gonna open it with Adobe Photoshop. And that will just open it up in a new file like this. Um, so if you're using a picture that's either landscape or just a bigger file that's not like Instagram size like I'm using, um, you can just open it up like that. And then all of the other pictures that you have should fit the um, same dimensions of your main image. Um, just make sure you do that while you're editing. You can check out my last video on Lightroom edits to make sure that you sync all of your pictures correctly and just all that. But after you open this picture in Photoshop, then you can do the exact same thing that we did last time by selecting all of these and just dragging them over and placing them into this file and creating your frame animation and going from there. So those are just the two ways um, to import and just how to edit your stop motion really easily in Photoshop. There's a lot of other platforms that you can use to edit these kind of videos. Um, this one just works the best for me and it seems to be the easiest for me considering the compatibility between Lightroom and Photoshop, both being Adobe platforms. Um, but yeah, I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching. So that's it guys, that's how easy it is to take a series of pictures and turn them into a stop motion video using Photoshop. 
I hope this was clear for you and I hope it was easy to understand. If you do have any comments or questions though, go ahead and leave them below in the comment section. Um, if you did find this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for more content and I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.